G'day, Cam Wildwild Touring. I've come out to my father-in-law's block to uh, do a new video I've been talking about doing, and it's comparing chainsaws for camping. So I've got with me three pretty different chainsaws, and what I'm looking at is what I think, for me, is the best for camping. It's not going to be what is the best chainsaw out there, it's just going to be what I think the best chainsaw for me for camping and overlanding and touring in general is. So I've got with me three of my saws. Um, the first one's probably the most common one you see uh, with campers and four-wheel drivers. Uh, that's the Steel MS 180. Uh, it's a two-stroke saw, so that's a brilliant saw for 200, uh, no, 300 bucks. It's a brilliant saw. Then I've got on the other end there, I've got the the lower end of uh, electric chainsaws. That's a Ryobi 18 volt. This is the cheapest one I reckon you can get. I think it was 150, 160 dollars for the skin only. This is the brushed version, not the brushless, so it's it is the cheapest one. Uh, it's a 10 or a 12 inch bar, I forget. It's definitely the lightest of the three, uh, but it's also the slowest chain speed by far, uh, which makes it quite bouncy when you're cutting, but you'll see that. Now, the only reason I went with that one originally was because uh, A, it was cheap, uh, B, it's small and light, uh, and, and C, I already had 18 volt Ryobi tools, so um, that was a no brainer. Now, that's a good saw too. Uh, that's brilliant for sort of collecting small bits of wood around for your campfire for one night kind of thing if there's only a few of you sitting around the fire uh, but if you've got a big group where you're planning to have a big fire or if you're collecting firewood to fill your trailer you're pushing shit uphill it's just not going to do it and then finally my new saw um, is the AEG 58 volt brushless now that's sort of mid to higher end of uh, battery saws and again it's it, it's a good all-rounder I think uh, I'm yet to really put it through its paces uh, but we'll cut some big wood today and see how it goes but basically I found myself taking two saws when I went away one for when I needed to cut a lot of wood or, or clear a big uh, fallen tree from a track or something and then I also wanted my little saw if I'm free camping and I'm around other people and I'm trying to quietly sort of discreetly collect a bit of wood without annoying people, I'm hoping that this animal in the middle is going to replace them both. Now obviously the difference between the two-stroke saws and the battery saws is that with the two-stroke saws you've got to bring fuel and two-stroke everywhere you go uh, and they require a lot more maintenance. So I'll show you what I had to do to get my saw ready for this season. Now I'm the first to admit that I'm terrible at maintaining my stuff. I generally will just use and abuse until it stuffs up and then it's pull it apart and try fix it again which half the time happens while I'm out and about um, and that sucks having said that uh, the last few times I've been using the steel two stroke saw it's been bogging down cutting out, won't idle, running like shit because I haven't been maintaining it so I've had to pull the carby off completely disassemble the carby and clean everything um, I've had to pull the plug out, clean the plug I've had to blow the air filter out which I haven't done yet, that's cake for shit, I'll probably need a new one. And then I've also had to rip the exhaust off the front of this and clean out all the carbon and burn all the carbon off the spark arrestor, which you have to have in Australia. Um, then I'll have to put fresh fuel in it because the fuel's gone stale, it's from last season. Um, and I'll have to give the, the uh, chain a little bit of a sharpen because it's a bit dull. And I'll also have to take the bar off uh, clean the oiler to make sure and clean the bar so the oil is getting around the bar properly otherwise you end up burning the bar burning the chain which you can see I've done before so there's a bit of maintenance in these things now I did all that and it's still not running that well and I've, I've probably stuffed something up somewhere along the line uh, and also I'm just shit with maintenance in general uh, which is sort of why I'm going towards electric source because my steel is still not running that well um, it'll run on full throttle but it sort of bogs down and cuts out um, when it's trying to idle so with the battery source all you need to have with you is access to 240 volt to charge the batteries uh, I think obviously Ryobi they do it they do a 12 volt charger I don't think AEG do uh, so I've got both chargers installed in my canopy um, running off the inverter anyway so that's no issue for me there's a Ryobi charger in the back there running off the inverter and in the back of the canopy I've mounted the AEG charger there as well which also runs back to my inverter. So the first bit of wood I'm going to work through is probably about 300mm diameter. This was an old 100 year old eucalyptus tree that got hit by lightning last season. So it's a pretty good test. All of these chains have been sharpened prior to this video.
Look, not a fair comparison. This thing's bogging down really badly. I did sharpen the chain, but it's just not got the power at the moment. It's not running well. But you can see this is kind of what I'm getting at with two-stroke saws. Um, they are good when they're running well, but even after an hour and a half, two hours of me tinkering around with it, it's still running like shit. The electric one, you just press the button and it goes. So the electric saw, this one's still got a chain break. No starting it, no stuffing around. I reckon. Don't know how long the battery's gonna last. Now both the AEG and the steel saw uh, take bar oil. Well they all take bar oil, but these two have automatic oilers. This the little Ryobi's got a little push button to pump the oil. I'm not I'm not even gonna bother trying to cut through that because I just won't get through it. But I'll show you on this little one. Um, this is about three meters per second chain speed on this little saw. On my big electric one, it's 21 meters per second. So a huge difference there. Obviously a smaller bar and no chain break on this. This is just for sure, for show. You can see for collecting wood for a small fire, a little saw like this is pretty good. It's not too bad. Probably won't bother showing you too much more of this little one because I think you get the idea. Now there's about a kilo in weight difference between the two saws, the steel being one kilo lighter. This is about five kilo and this is about six kilos. Uh, in terms of bar length, pretty sure they were the same. They look the same. Uh, 16 inch bar, I do believe. out of interest sight we'll see if the little Ryobi 18 volt would get through something like this Because I had to turn it around 35,000 times, I've missed my line. But yes, this little Ryobi will cut big wood. I would consider that big wood. If that was a, a log that size, it's bigger than I'm putting on a little fire, a little campfire we're gonna have. Um, it will cut wood that size. Granted, you've got 20 hours to bloody cut it. 
Anyway, I think that demonstrates the differences between these chainsaws. Just want to reiterate, uh, this isn't about bag and the mini boss, the steel, brilliant saw. Um, it's just showcasing what these battery saws can do now. They've come a hell of a long way. Um, this is still, it's showing one bar. There's four bars, it's showing one, 25%. Whether or not that it's accurate, I don't know. Um, I may keep cutting some wood until it goes flat. See how many cuts I get. But yeah, this is big timber, far bigger than I'd be having for a uh, for a campfire. But this is the kind of stuff that might be blocking your track when you're out and about four-wheel driving. So a saw that can get through it um, is what I wanted. And it's a hell of a, and it's a lot quieter than the two-stroke. The two-stroke's noisy as. This is fairly quiet. Good for uh, discreetly getting a bit of firewood when you need to. Another good thing about this um, AEG. Uh, it's from Bunnings, so there's Bunnings all around the country. Um, there was a three-year warranty on the battery and a six-year warranty on the device. If you register online, it was 650 bucks for the kit with a charger and one battery. Um, but there was a redemption where when you register online, they send you another battery for free. So I ended up with two batteries. And the batteries are worth like 270 bucks or something, so that was worth doing. But if I have any dramas with this anywhere in Australia, I can just go straight into a Bunnings hand it over and they'll give me a new one. Um, so I quite like that. Uh, and the only maintenance I've got to do on it is keep that chain and bar in good condition. That's it. Um, and that's what I need, low maintenance. Because like I said, I'm pretty shitty with my maintenance. And there you have it folks. That's what I was able to cut on one battery from the AEG. Uh, not an enormous amount, um, but certainly enough to uh, to have a, a massive campfire or, or to, to clear a track. So it suits my purposes. And the time that it took to cut that, um, and it would take to split it and stack it, uh, I'd have my second battery be fully charged. So I would I would be able to cut wood indefinitely if, if I did want to. So I could fill a trailer load if I wanted to. Uh, if you're interested in seeing some other reviews of this saw, I couldn't find a hell of a lot on it. Um, in the US, they call it an Echo 58 volt. Uh, E-C-H-O, Echo. So uh, there's quite a few reviews of that online. There you go. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.